So I was asked on a weaving forum on Ravelry about whether the new electrical wheel comb winder will work with a specific size of tube that a lot of people have left over from uh, yarn they've bought. So uh, this is my first test and uh, so far it's looking good. I've had to, all these pieces in white are extra bits I've 3D printed. Firstly I didn't have a tube of the size people were talking about so I printed the tube. Then I printed the um, cone holder and the uh, arm. I couldn't fit the arm on the print bed of my uh, 3D printer all in one go, so I sliced it down the middle there, so mine's actually in two pieces, but that seems to work fine. With the arm, it actually was designed, this cross part here, for tubes with a minimum inside diameter of 18 millimetres. This one is 16, so as well as changing the parameters, Maurice, uh, made it very easy for people to change I did have to go back in the history of the file and uh, make this bit smaller but it wasn't really that much work then I've, uh, I've put a mark there with a sharpie uh, so I know where to uh, place the tube to make sure it winds properly and down here I've got a couple of bits of index card that I folded up and taped to the base if I were doing this permanently I'd uh, make a uh, more elegant solution but for the time being this was my testing now, this uh, yarn, as it winds, it does want to jump up a little bit over these index cards, so I've just been putting my hand on it to uh, keep it low down. I could put a small loop here, which I probably would if I was doing this regularly, but also I could move my tensioner a lot closer. The reason you need the tensioner 40 centimetres away is to allow even winding over the full length of the cone, but we're not using the full length of the drum, so I can actually tension it an awful lot closer. So uh, I'll put my hand here just so it's in frame you can see what's going on and to uh, stop it bumping up over here if I were to do this um, on a regular basis if I had a lot of these tubes myself I would probably 3d print a little l-shaped thing that came up much higher to uh, stop the yarn moving past it now I'm just gonna turn this up and you can see it bumps past each of the uh, pieces of uh, card but doesn't uh, go any further so uh, it's winding the tube fairly evenly to my mind. I'll keep going and see if it ends up lumpy or collapsing at the ends or anything. I could turn it up. I'm only going at speed two out of six right now so it is going quite slowly but uh, this is the first time I've done it and I, I don't want to ruin anything. But let's try a bit more speed. Right, that's about, yeah, it's kind of up to 50% there, so uh, I think I'll just leave it at that uh, and see what happens. Oh, and uh, yeah, I you can see there's a blue elastic band on my arm here. That was my uh, first thought about how to hold it on, but I could actually only find one elastic band. And so the other side, I just put a little bit of tape, same tape I'm using here, <coughs> and I ended up moving the cone to make it more centred, and the elastic band's not needed at all. I'm not sure if the bit of tape is, is doing anything either, or whether when the arm is pressed down there's actually enough friction that the tube doesn't move from side to side. It's uh, not something I've played with, but uh, it uh, doesn't seem to need much effort. Well, that's grinding really nicely now. I will uh, stop and take it off so you can see. So, as I said, mine is in two pieces, so I have to be careful here just to lift them both up at the same time. And there we go. I didn't get it entirely even, so it's why there's a little bit more emptiness on that end of the cone than that. But uh, for a first attempt, that is uh, pretty neat. So I hope that helps those of you who have these cones and uh, want to use the cone winder to wind them.